So just to recap, I had this Amiga 500 Plus bought a few years ago, car boot fair, opened it up just expecting to be a bit of uh, battery damage. Battery wasn't too bad, but the Agnes chip and the holder was in a really bad state. When you first switched it on, you were just getting a blank screen. Last video, I managed to get it to go from being just a blank screen to a green flashing screen. And at the end of that video, the only thing I couldn't really test was the Agnes chip. So bought another Agnes chip, here it is. Um, so we're gonna try that now, see if that makes any difference and also test the memory as well. And fingers crossed by the end of this video, we got to work in Amiga 500 Plus. So since last time, I've removed one of the memory chips and I've put a socket in underneath it. And I'm going to do the same for all the rest of them. I've got my new Agnes chip. So I'm removing the old Agnes chip, put a new one in, see if it makes a difference. Again, the trouble is I wasn't able to test this. It's not compatible with the 500, this particular Agnes. So I managed to get this one for a fairly good price. And again, worst case scenario, if I wanted to sell it on, I know I could get my money back, no problem. But I'm probably going to hold on to it anyway, just for future repairs, because it's going to get more and more difficult to get hold of these chips until somebody comes up with a good equivalent. So again, still got the green screen. Although one thing I did notice, when I left it on for a little while, it went from a green screen to a yellow screen, which was kind of odd. Um, don't think that's anything to do with the chip, I just think it's just where I left it on for a longer than normal and it's gone back to a green screen again. So I've removed all the chips now from the 500 plus, all the memory chips, and I've put a socket on my old 500 just so I can test each chip individually. So this green screen is with no chips in there, I'm missing that first memory chip. So I'll put my first memory chip in. This is a memory chip from the 500 and it's booting up. So we know that one's good. Just putting a little sticker on it so I know I've tested that one. Go for the next one. Yep, good. Sticker. Next one. Yep, yeah, all good. So this one, bad. Obviously damaged. So all the rest of them were all okay. So again, I don't have a... Um, a 20 pin socket so I've, what I've done I've just improvised I've used a 14 pin and a 6 pin together to make my uh, 20 pin sockets up for this memory just to put it back on the board again now now I've found a faulty memory chip I'm wondering is that what was causing the issue and that's why because again a green screen normally indicates a memory issue so I've just got to put all this uh, memory back in now and uh, test it and what I'm going to do is take the good memory chip from the 500 to replace that one in the 500 plus see if that makes a difference And the good thing with these is they kind of held on pretty good, just putting them sideways like this seemed to work pretty well. Again, just putting a little dab of solder in each corner just to hold them in place so then I can uh, solder them down properly.
thing I will say about the Amiga 500 Plus, because it's got the whole one meg of RAM in it, the 500's normally only got the 512, so half the sockets aren't populated. So, soldering-wise, it takes an age to, to get it all soldered back in again. And I suppose I could have left half of them out and left it at 512 just for testing purposes, but might as well do it while I'm here, put them all in at the same time, just makes it easier. Hopefully, once this is done, it's fixed the problem. Now I know I've definitely got a faulty memory chip. Fingers crossed. Still the same thing, still a green screen. So at this point here, I decided to try a logic probe. I've never used one before, but I've got to say going forward, this is a great little device. So just so you know what you need to do is, I'm connecting this to my zero volts off of the um, socket here, and I found on the 500 this first pin on the keyboard gives me a good 5 volts and all you do just power the board up and then you can just dab it on each one of the um, chips and just see what data you're getting I mean don't get me wrong you're not going to make much sense of it because again it's going to be it's either going to go high ones or zeros so you can see there they're all one, so anything, and the flashing one means there's data coming backwards and forwards. But this is where it becomes really handy. So there, I'm getting nothing on that pin. There's no data, nothing flowing at all. Now, that might be an issue, might not be an issue. But again, I thought I would trace out that particular one, see whether I'm getting any continuity to where it should be which is number four down there, and I'm getting nothing. So, soldered in another little bridging wire. And again, I'm just counting, so it was six in either side, right in the middle, this one, at the top. And again, I did go around all these points and test them, but maybe I've just missed something. Or maybe I just checked the top half of the connection, not the bottom half of the connection, but there should definitely be a continuity between these two points. And there isn't, so by using this little jump wire now, I'm gonna put, make sure that it's definitely 100% in the right place. We know we've definitely got a correct trace then. And let's see what we got now. Again, just checking the way. Obviously, I should get a continuity there, but just to make sure there's no dry joints or anything, just check it. Oh. Oh, a bit shaky. White screen. Yes. Finally. So after all that, that's what the issue was by the looks of it. And again, it could be a one thing missing on the memory, it could be one thing missing on on the Agnes. You know, it's it's such a it's so nice once you find it and afterwards you kind of slap your head and think, why didn't I go to that first? But it is a process of elimination. You just keep going and going until you finally get it. So I thought I'd just try the old Agnes chip in here, this original one, just see so make sure that is actually working.
yep, that's working lovely. So now I've got a spare Agnes chip for any future needs. Then I thought I'd also try, so this is the memory from the 500. That memory sitting there to the right, that is the original bad memory, the one that does need replacing. But I just thought I'd see if it does come up with a green screen with that back in there. So, even with the bad chip, it's got enough to boot. So yeah, we could have got away with just the bad chip, potentially. So, good to know. Right now I'm just going to put the good chip back in there again, connect the floppy drive, just see if our floppy drive's working now. So I thought, what better than to try one of the discs out of the box that originally came with the 500. So I've got Lemmings. Got my workbench disc there. So I went for the Simpsons versus the Space Mutants. Nothing working on that one. So I thought I'd try one of my cover discs, see whether that was working. That seems to be working fine. So from that pack again, I thought I'd try kick gloves. Does not sound good. Well, that sounds like pure horror. So, something tells me all these discs potentially are damaged. So, again, thought I'd try one from my other collection. And what else you got to go for with a 500 plus? Came in the original pack. Just from a different original pack, not the one that came with this computer. So that's all looking good. Thought I'd just give it a quick try. Never played this game before, as you'll soon see. Happy that everything's working there, so I thought I'd just remove my uh, Christmas seller tape from the rest of the chips so I can get this computer back together again. So I thought I'd put the uh, old bad memory back in this one because at some point I'm going to have to open it again in the future. Also, got to remember to put the this drive in before I put the top shroud in on because otherwise I can't plug it in. You 
see, this is my old 500 keyboard, and this is this 500 plus keyboard. As you can see, a slight difference in the uh, the coloration of it. Let's just get the keyboard back plugged in. Top of the case back on again. As I say, externally, condition-wise, this thing looks lovely. I mean, it's even still got the uh, plastic cover over the 500 plus symbol. Again, one thing I did notice, the alt key, for some reason, is missing the spring underneath. So I've just put a little replacement spring on there for now. But very odd that that would be removed. You know, it looks like this thing hasn't really been used that much. So I just thought I'd uh, leave it with a nice little game of sensible soccer again another Amiga classic that's all good getting the Amiga 500 just putting its memory originally back in there just give it a little quick test and that's good that's the end of the Amigas so hopefully we'll try something else next time